Bible, Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. And as we read, I want to say something to you. There is a saying, it's a famous saying that says, No wind blows fair for a boat or a ship whose destination is not defined. When the boat is sailing on the sea and the wind blows, any ship on the sea whose destination is not defined will begin to complain about the wind. The wind is not fair because you have not defined your destination. But when you define your destination, every sailor experienced sailor understands that wind is a necessity to enable him to channel and adjust the sails so that he reaches his destination. You need wind that blows contrary so that you can adjust the sails to reach your destination. To a man whose destination is defined, every wind is fair. That wind is working for my good is not working against me. So if you are faced with any challenge and you have defined destiny, you have understood that the purpose of God upon your life, that problem is not working against you. It's working for you. Can I hear somebody say nothing works against me? Are you delayed? Every delay for somebody who is called of God. The Bible says, and all the things, all these things, you need to go back and ask and read the previous verses to see what kind of things he's talking about. It says, all the things. We see in 2 Corinthians, it says, is it perils? Is it abandonment? Is it loneliness? Is it rejection? Is it poverty? Are you hearing this man? says nothing can break me nothing can separate me he knew that all the things are working for his own good are you hearing me if you know you carry an assignment every negative wind is to your advancement every challenge is to your advancement you can't win the battle of life if your mindset is twisted Jesus had a different mind. He said, somebody say, I hear you. He comes when somebody's dead. He says, he's sleeping. That's a mindset. Are you hearing me? Everybody's moaning. They are preparing for burial. Jesus shows up and says, hey, don't cry. He's asleep. He tells his disciples, the, the friend of his Lazarus, he's been dead for four days. He tells them he's asleep. That's called, tell your friend, that's called a mindset. Now you, you have a small, uh, a small swelling on your toe. You say, I'm dead, I'm finished. You are still breathing. They tell you cancer is on stage two. You say you're done, you're finished. Lazarus was dead for four days. Jesus says he's asleep. Jesus is aware that in the realm of the spirit, language is important. He refuses to call those things which are the way they are. He calls those things which are not as though they are. Are you hearing me? Some of you have already accepted. You say, I am poor. I am done. Then you come to God. Lord, prosper me. Now, God doesn't know which one to do. Somebody say, Satan, you're a liar. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 11. I'm reading from the Message Bible and it goes like this. The focus of my letter wasn't on punishing the offender, but on getting you to take responsibility for the health of the church. So if you, so if you, you forgive him, I forgive him. Do not think I am carrying around a list of personal grudges. The fact is that I am joining in with your forgiveness. As Christ is with us, guiding us. After all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening. For yet 
more mischief. Uh, let me read again. After all, we don't want to unwillingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We are not oblivious, ignorant to his sly ways. This was as a result of an offender in the church. Somebody had sinned uh, or had uh, offended some brothers. And Paul says, you know, if you have chosen as a church to forgive him, I forgive him. So don't you suppose that I am holding a list of grudges of all those people who have sinned against me as Paul and said nasty things about me? No, I'm not in the business of holding grudges against them. If you have forgiven them, I to forgive them. And it goes on to say, do not give Satan a foothold. Verse 11, he says this. He says, after all, we do not want to unwittingly give Satan an opening. Let me tell you something. Grudges and the conflicts are what give Satan an opening. Most people's prayer lives are hindered because of the grudges they are holding in their hearts. Now, somebody say, but you came to talk about Canaan and destruction. Yes, and I am approaching it as the Holy Ghost wants it from different angles. Because one of, you see, let me tell you something. If Satan, let me even read what I said. The most dangerous and disastrous destructions are the ones that are subtle and least expected. Are you understanding me? The most dangerous satanic destructions are the ones that are subtle. They do not seem to be dangerous. The ones that are hidden, the ones that are subtle and least expected are the most dangerous ones. Because for Satan, if he can convince you in an, in, in an issue, a manner not to look satanic enough, then he has gotten you. If Satan can set up a, a, an event, but the event does not look demonic. That's the one that he uses the most. I, 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 don't, I don't see any problem listening to um, um, this music. It's not, it, it has no foul language. Can I tell you that the spirit of an artist follows his artwork? But the devil won't tell you that. Do you remember David playing the harp? He's playing the harp to cast out a demon from this king Saul who's possessed. Let me ask you. When he was playing a harp, the instrument, did David say a word? I can't hear the church. Did he say a word? Why is it that he plays the spirit out of a man without saying a word? Because the criterion for somebody who was supposed to play for the king was this. Go get a man. A man who is a skillful player and anointed and of good character. Because anointing comes upon a character. And then he's skillful and is anointed. Let him play. So what is anointing? Enablement. Somebody say enablement. Anointing. There are several types of anointing. There is divine anointing and demonic anointing. Yes, anointing is enablement. There are those that are enabled. Haven't you seen guys walking on water and they, and they are not born again? You, there's a guy, this guy, the magician who walks on water here, London Bridge. Ah, uh -huh, that guy. Is he under divine enablement? Demonic what? Satan has his own anointing. Satan anointed Michael Jackson so greatly that whenever Michael Jackson was singing, people were, fall, were being slain. The way you see worshippers in the church sing and people faint and fall down. People were being slain whenever Michael Jackson took the microphone. And then people would fall. <laughs> Tell your friend Satan has his own anointing. Are you hearing me? So the guy began to play the harp and the demon left. Why? The spirit of an artist follows the artwork, his own artwork. That's why you can go 
on your African trips or wherever you go and you get a sculpture, this, what do you call this small what? Uh, the, 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 art, the, arts, the art crafts, those ones. There's a guy, a pastor, had his daughter dying of cancer, six-year-old daughter dying of cancer, but the pastor didn't know why. He went to minister in Japan and they gave him a voodoo idol eh, to return as a gift. In the congregation was a satanic agent who gifted pastor after preaching a teddy bear of a voodoo, voodoo teddy bear idol. And, they, and she took, he took it. The daughter began to be sick. Cancer. Diagnosed with cancer. They prayed and prayed. They prayed the daughter was dying. The pastor called and all other pastor friends. They prayed for pastor's daughter. Pastor's daughter was dying. Until one of the intercessors, one mama who prays with the pastor came to pastor. Pastor, I was praying and the Lord has shown me in a vision that what's troubling your daughter is there's a teddy bear you gave to her as a gift. It was given to you on your mission in Japan. And it is through that, it is the point of contact that the, the, the satanic agent in Japan is using to inflict your daughter of cancer. And the pastor said, looked at this mama, knew the mama doesn't stay in pastor's house, doesn't know what happens in the bedroom of the daughter. This girl was fond of the teddy bear. Every night she slept with it. That day, pastor came, took the teddy bear. As they were burning the teddy bear, demons were screaming in Japanese language, leaving the daughter, the pastor's daughter. And when they took her for screening, there was no cancer in her body. What happened? Teddy bear. Why? Because the spirit of an artist pursues his artwork.